Hi guys, welcome back to our channel. I'm Michelle. And for those of you that are new here, welcome to our channel. My name is Jessie. We are Moms on Time, and in this channel, we talk about true crime and everything paranormal. So today, Michelle has a crazy story for us. What are we talking today, Mama? Today's a true crime story. It's the murder of David Bryan Stidham. Before I jump into the story, I want to say if you're new here and you're not yet subscribed, please take this opportunity right now to go ahead and subscribe to us and you can hang out with us every time we upload. So today's story, David Brian Stidham, um, he was an ophthalmologist. He was born in Longview, Texas, born and raised uh, August 13th, 1967. He was said to be a really good kid, a good student. He worked really hard. He worked so hard that he actually made it into Harvard Medical School in mm -hmm. 1990, and he graduated in 1993. Um, from there, he moved to Dallas, Texas, and he entered a residency program at the University of Texas Southwestern Medical School. At first, he focused on internal medicine, but about a year in, he decided that he wanted to be an ophthalmologist, so he started going to school for that, focusing his career on becoming an ophthalmologist. Um, mm -hmm. While he was in Dallas, that's where he ended up meeting his wife, mm -hmm. Daphne. Um, they got married in 1997. And after a while, the couple moved to Indianapolis and uh, Dr. Stidham took a fellowship with a pediatric ophthalmologist there. And he specialized in, um, I can't say the word, so I'm not even gonna try, but it's like a special disease of the eye or a few, yeah. I guess. <laughs> and so like, he wanted to be like an ophthalmologist and like um, an eye surgeon, but his specialty mm -hmm. was pediatric. And they, they, like everything I've read about him, they said that he just had like, like the best easygoing personality and he was quick to make people feel at ease around him. And us being moms, you know, if your kid likes a doctor, mm -hmm. that's a good sign. That's always like, that's a good thing. You're going to stick with them. So it said that everybody just liked him. He was just an easygoing guy and just easy to like um so after that in um in indiana he returned to texas in 1998 with his wife and he was working at the university of texas health science center in houston um their first child was born there uh alexandra brown brian i don't know the word the name i don't know i can't pronounce it um he was born in 2000 and then the couple moved to Tucson for a job opportunity. And that's where their second child was born, their daughter, Catherine Elizabeth. And she was born in Tucson, Arizona in 2003. So what brought the Stidhams to Arizona was in 2001, Dr. Stidham answered an ad that he saw. It was placed in a trade journal from another ophthalmologist named Bradley Schwartz. So he was seeking someone, um, in his practice to care for the pediatric patients. He wanted a specialized pediatric ophthalmologist in his office. And he hired Dr. Stidham. They moved here to Tucson in November of 2001. And things were okay at first, but quickly took a pretty bad turn. And it was unfortunate because all the patients that came to the office, they all loved Dr. Stidham. And the parents loved him, the patients loved him, and their kids, so that's, that's hard to come by, so right yeah. away, he was loved, he was loved by the office staff, he's just all-around good guy, however, not that long into him being there, actually December 2001, a month after Dr. Stidham joined the practice, it was raided by the DEA, so I'll give you the backstory on that, we'll talk okay. a little bit about Bradley Schwartz. So, Dr. Bradley Schwartz didn't start off bad. Mm -hmm. However, he, I'm not sure, I read that he had chronic neck, back, and jaw pain, and then I read somewhere else it was related to an injury. So, mm -hmm. because of this, he got addicted to Vicodin mm -hmm. and a few other prescription pills. And Dr. Schwartz also got involved in a relationship with the mother of one of his patients. Oh and she oh. happened to be the Pima County deputy attorney. 
So she was like kind of, you know, she held like a pretty important job in Tucson. So he's like super messy, right? Like he's got a relationship going on with the foster mom of one of his patients. And he's just got like all of these girlfriends, right? Um, she allowed, so this girlfriend the, of the, the mom of one of his patients, she allowed him to use her name to fraudulently write prescriptions. So he would write out these prescriptions to her for pain pills, but then she would fill it and turn around and give it to him. And then I guess he had like an office lady that, that worked for him that would do it for him too. And like he started to get like this little network of people that would mm -hmm. help him out. He would write them prescriptions, they would fill them and then they would give it to him because he had this addiction to pain pills. So that's why the DEA raided the office because they did some investigating. They might've been tipped off, but they knew something was going on there. So they raided his office. He had his medical license suspended. So he was charged with 77 counts, all these different charges related to like fraud. It's, you can't do that. You know what I mean? Like, that's, as a a doctor, lot. like that, that's all bad. So Dr. Stidham was not that kind of a guy. He was very like straight, you know what I mean? Like straight laced, yeah. like by the book. So he had only been in this practice for a month. So he was like, dude, I'm out. Like, I'm mm -hmm. not sticking around for this. So he decided to leave that partnership and go start his own practice close by. And many patients followed him, but that he didn't go out of his way to get them. They, they liked him. They, they liked who he was as a doctor. So they followed him to his new practice. But however, that pissed off Dr. Schwartz. He took no, this bet. as like an ultimate betrayal. But what kind of stupid is that, that you can't see that you're the cause of it? I want, I want to take my kid to some doctor who's like addicted to pain pills and got raided by the DEA. Right. I would never take my kid there again. Exactly. I would never go again. But Crazy, there's people right? like that, you know, they like to blame other people for. Yeah. For, like, for own up to your crap. Yeah, like, yeah. his life like, took, like, a total nosedive. His wife divorced him. His medical license was suspended. Like, he he lost it all. Mm -hmm. But he held on to this grudge against Dr. Stidham. He blamed Dr. Stidham for all of it, which is crazy because he had only been there a month. He didn't do anything. And by all accounts, he didn't steal the patients. The patients followed him because exactly. they liked him. Mm -hmm. So... um. 2003, Dr. Schwartz, he started to get his life, like, kind of back on track. Like, things started to get a little bit better. In 2004, his life started to turn around. He was back um, practicing medicine. He was allowed back into that um, profession, and he was trying to get his own patients back or, like, rebuild it, you know? Yeah. Um, so, he even had to go to rehab. So, the way back up into treating patients again was a very long road for him after all those everything he had to do to you know kind of wipe the slate clean mm -hmm. um so we go to 2004 it's been three years about three years since the office was raided and since these two doctors wow. had a partnership together mm -hmm. on the evening of october 5th 2004 the cleaning crew that showed up to clean a medical plaza pulled up to the parking lot um, around 1030 at night and they saw a man down on the ground and um, paramedics were called, but it was too late. Dr. Stidham was found murdered in the parking lot of his <laughs> practice. He had been stabbed multiple times. His Ooh. car was gone, but he still had his wallet. So his phone and his car were gone. Mm -hmm. Wallet was still on him. So they were quick to not a robbery yeah who he was oh first they thought it was robbery but his wallet was still on him mm -hmm. and the so, cell phone yeah the cell phone was gone but it turned up being in the car so it was his 1992 lexus that was missing his cell phone um he was found to have been stabbed 15 times so Ooh. police can tell also by the way that somebody is murdered it says a lot about yeah 
the circumstances. So the fact that he was stabbed 15 times, they knew that this was a little more than a robbery. Because typically mm-hmm. in a robbery, stab him a few times, get out. 15 times is like very, that's malicious. That's yeah. a lot of anger involved. There's so, rage in there. Police right away were trying to find, they wanted to find the car because they knew if they found the car that they could get a lot of evidence from it. So right away they did some investigating and the news was of course on the, uh, it was on the news, you know, the whole story about the murder was on the news. Right away police started getting phone calls from people who saw it on the news saying, you need to look into Dr. Bradley Schwartz. That's the only person that that guy had a problem with is him. And even Dr. Stidham's wife, when they told her that her husband had been murdered, she told them right away, you need to look at Dr. Bradley Schwartz right Mm -hmm. away. So of course police were, and just so happened the day after the murder, they got a phone call from a woman who had gone out on a date with Dr. Schwartz the night of the murder. And she said, Hey, listen, like I haven't known him very long, but when you talk to him, it's like almost all he talks about is his disdain for Dr. Stidham. He hates him. He blames him for everything. And she said some really weird stuff happened on our date. Um, He kept getting phone calls. His phone was just blowing up, blowing up, and he wasn't answering it. But he did answer it a couple times. And I heard a male's voice on the other end say, where, where's the money? And Mm -hmm. she said, you know, he was just being really weird. And then this guy that he knows showed up to eat um, dinner with us. And she knew the guy's name is Bruce. So she said, Bruce showed up halfway through our date and like hung out with us. And she said, um, Dr. Schwartz said something weird to him, like halfway through the meal. She said, I didn't know Bruce to be in medicine, but he asked him, how did those uh, scrubs work out for you? And he said, oh yeah, they worked out really good. But he, she said that uh, Bruce just seemed kind of fidgety and kind of weird. And then when they left the restaurant, they stopped by an ATM Dr. Schwartz pulled out money, and then they went to a hotel room where he got a room for Bruce, but only the two of them went in. She waited in the car. So the next morning, she stayed the night with him. She saw the story on the news, and she was like, oh my God, is that the guy you said you should be your partner? And he was like, yeah, whatever. Didn't seem shocked or anything about the story. So she called the police and was like, something is really weird. So Mm -hmm. police started investigating. They ended up finding Dr. Stidham's car uh, like a few miles away and there was blood on the inside. So they were able to tell that he was probably getting in his car when he was attacked and he first was stabbed inside the vehicle and then pulled out and his cell phone was in there. So they started to do some investigating around the crime scene and there was a like convenience store across the street. And they mm-hmm. kind of put two and two together and they said, well, hey, let's, um, let's go look into that convenience store across the street. Let's see if, you know, anybody matches this description because police knew right away the Bruce that met them at dinner was Bruce Bigger. He was a convicted felon, but nothing like serious, no like aggravated crimes. He had never murdered anybody, just like small petty stuff. So yeah. he took his mugshot to the convenience store and it just so happened the woman that was working the night before was there and she identified him and said, yeah, that guy was in here and he was being really weird and fidgety, he kept coming in the store and walking around and he would be looking out the windows and then he was going outside and just being really weird and they said like, what did he look like? What was he wearing? And she said he was wearing scrubs he had scrubs on. So Mm -hmm. she said, yeah, he kept using the payphone outside and then he used our phone in here. So police like were able to get the phone records for the payphone and for the convenience store and the the calls that he made matched up with the same times he was calling Dr. Schwartz while he was at dinner with that woman. So that guy, Dr. Schwartz, took her to dinner for an alibi. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. So, so she's like, no, it couldn't be me because yeah. I have this I girl with me. Yeah. Yeah, I was at dinner. I was nowhere near there. Stupid. Like, they you were so stupid. And someone. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then he's calling you, blowing his phone up before he murders him. And, like, after he murders him, he's, like, calling you. Stupid. I think maybe he was probably calling him before he murdered him. And then he took off in the car and, like, hit it somewhere. 
So police found Dr. Stidham's blood inside the car along with some unknown DNA on the volume control for the radio. And mm. they already had um, Bigger's DNA. So they ran a quick test and it matched. So yeah. they were able to arrest um, Ronald Bruce Bigger and Dr. Bradley Schwartz um, on, in connection to this murder. So when they arrested Dr. Schwartz, I thought this was crazy just because, I don't know, he just seems like a, like a doofy kind of guy, but I guess he's like a real, like, I don't know, he's like a player. He's got like all these girlfriends. And when they went to arrest him, he was actually like, doing the dirty with some chick and like, and like all these different random chicks like this guy's like messy and you think about doctors don't you always like kind of feel like they're like I don't know you hold them at a different standard I guess yeah yeah it's like, you're this doctor, like, people respect you <laughs> this guy's like a hot ass mess he's like a pill popper he's got like all these chicks all these, and yeah yeah, he's a mess. Like, this dude's a mess. And the mom of that um, kid, she actually, she got in a lot of trouble, too. When he had gotten arrested, she got in a lot of trouble. So she was, um, what did I say she was? Oh, deputy county attorney in um, yeah. Tucson. She got disbarred. She ended up having to work as, like, a paralegal. This fool called her from, <laughs> from police headquarters and was trying to get her to represent him but she had already talked to the cops and she already told them like yeah I'm sure he did it because he hates Dr. Stidham I'm sure he did it like everybody turned on him yeah nobody was on this guy's side so um Dr. Schwartz he ended up going on trial he never took the stand in his own defense um own defense but he was eventually convicted and sentenced to 25 years to life for a conspiracy to murder um, the jury came back hung on the first degree murder charge, which mm. sucked, but because in Arizona, Why? I don't know, and that, like, I guess they, I was watching a show about it, and they were saying, like, I guess juries get kind of confused in Arizona about that, because there's this law in Arizona that if you get arrested, um, like, say, you hire somebody to kill somebody, or, mm -hmm. um, like, drunk driving, different not drunk driving. I don't think, I think that's a different charge, but if you help facilitate the murder, or if you know that a murder occurred, like you're with somebody and they killed somebody and you don't say something, you can get charged with first degree murder. But right. I guess oftentimes juries have a hard time convicting people of that if the knife, because the knife wasn't actually in his hand. So they said they felt like weird about convicting him on that, but I would have done it in a heartbeat. I would have, yeah, I would have voted for first degree murder. Bruce. Bruce wouldn't kill um, the doctor if he, if nobody hired him or nobody told him to. Yeah, so, you, you know, did it. Like, Your exactly. actions directly led to his murder. So I feel like he should have been, he should have been found he guilty on that. Yeah. He wasn't. He didn't. He wasn't at all. So he, he got the the other charge and he spends the 25 years of life and he has to specifically serve 25 years before he's eligible for parole and that will be in 2029. Um, Bruce Bigger, he went on trial in 2007 and I mean they tried to <laughs> get him off on it but because the DNA and everything else like there was just no way that they couldn't find him guilty. So they did find him guilty of conspiracy to commit first degree murder and first degree murder itself. And he was sentenced to life in prison without parole. Um, both uh, attorneys for both of them, Schwartz and Bigger, they both filed appeals. Uh, Bigger's appeal suggested that he didn't get a fair trial because of all the media coverage, because that's like, that story scandalous. Like one doctor yeah. hired somebody to have another doctor killed. Like, that was, like, a scandalous story. And that happened out right. in Tucson, and it was big news here in Phoenix. So, yeah, both of them tried to get their appeals thrown out because of the media coverage, but... I'd be like, no. Nope. No, it was... Denied. No, it was so that, you know, you're guilty. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what the hell? Yeah. Um, <laughs> in prison... So Dr. Schwartz, he got beat up, like, I guess he's been attacked, like, numerous times in prison also, 
Oh, and wow. he got beat up so bad one time that it like broke his eye sockets and messed up his tear ducts and um he got like nasal damage facial fractures he needed plastic surgery to put his face like back together oh that's how bad um, oh and this is i just found this like i don't know you know karma like karma's yeah i oh, believe yeah. in karma is gonna get you he suffered permanent um eyesight loss from the how assault ironic. and you're an ophthalmologist and yeah isn't that crazy how like ironic. i just love how karma works I don't know. It's just so crazy. He, well, he's probably he, he, he in there charming. being all being all cocky and stuff, you know. It's like mm -hmm. I'm a doctor, and it's yeah. a different world in there. Yeah. Can you imagine? On the outside, he had like money, and I think he probably he probably thought he was like tough shit on oh, the outside. Okay. Like mm -hmm. this dude acted like a gangster, but he probably got like, to jail and was like, "Oh yeah, no, never mind. No, I'm not." No, like, yeah. I'm it's not like about the real this gangsters are in there. <laughs> yeah. Um, he tried to sue the state of Arizona for $750,000 too afterwards saying that he wasn't like kept safe in prison. But I mean, I think prison is prison and nobody's safe in there. I'm just going to say. Exactly. The so inmate that attacked him, the inmate that attacked him like really bad actually got charged with aggravated assault and he oh. got like more time on top of his time for it. Um, yeah, so they so say why? That, no, probably being cocky. I don't know. Who knows? Yeah. I don't know. Probably. probably. Mm -hmm. He walks in there in his high horse. Yeah. Hey, I'm a doctor. I got money. Mm -hmm. But people in jail are like, nope. Nope. Who cared? They don't care in there. Your money's no good in there. Mm -hmm. Nope. Um, Dr. Stidham's widow. Daphne, she ended up filing a wrongful death suit in 2005 against the medical complex where her husband was murdered, saying the conditions of the complex helped aid the killer. I guess the parking lot was really dark and stuff. Mm -hmm. And so um, I, she won that lawsuit and then she filed a suit in 2005 against Pima County, um, the mom of, and also the mom of that kid, the the chick that he was met dr schwartz was messing around with yeah and a couple of other people she filed a long wrongful death lawsuit against them because they ended up saying that they knew how much he hated dr stidham and he often talked about murdering him and, and nobody did. ever mm -hmm. spoke up nobody ever said anything mm -hmm. and i guess he had actually tried a few times to hire somebody to kill dr stidham oh and this was like so childish and stupid I saw on a show I was watching that once Dr. Stidham had left and had his own practice, Dr. Schwartz was trying to hire people to go to Dr. Stidham's practice and act like a patient and then say that he had touched them inappropriately. <laughs> he was trying to hire people to plant like child pornography in his office and stuff. Like, what the time, hell? Something was real messed up with him where he blamed all of his misfortune on Dr. Stidham, who had only been working for him for a month. Like, right. you're a hot ass mess. I got no loyalty to you after a month. And like, you're a doctor. Like, conduct yourself in a better way if i was dr yeah. Stephen, i would have done the same thing i would have left and started my own practice too i wouldn't mm -hmm. want to be associated with that and you lost patients because you're a hot ass mess and nobody's going to want to go see you nobody's going to want to take your kids to your office if you're like a drug addict and it's like you exactly know, imagine, you imagine if your pediatrician's office was raided by the dea would you go back oh hell no no <laughs> Yeah, so this guy, like, I oh, guess the whole good. time, between the end of 2001 to October 2004, when he had Dr. Stidham murdered, that's, he talked about it incessantly, all the time to people, oh, and said how much he hated him, he wanted him to die, hey, if you know somebody that'll kill him, let me know, like, it was all the time, so his wife filed that wrongful death lawsuit and said, had any of you spoken up? about the things that he was saying about my husband, this would have never happened. He never exactly. would have been in a position to murder my husband or have my husband murdered. So she, um, I guess part of the suit or some of it was thrown out, but um, I believe she did end up winning majority yeah. of the suit and majority of the charges that she put forth on them, she 
did. And I'm glad because she's a widow and she had two young children. And I know. I mean, that's good that she won, but still, you know, it's like, it's it still sad and it doesn't, mm -hmm, doesn't bring her husband back. Mm -hmm. Oh no, my God. Their, son, their daughter, she was so young too when it happened. She was only born, what did I say, 2000? She was born in 2000. So she was four years old. Like, that's, oh my that's gosh. Really that's, that's Jet's age. Mm -mm. Yeah. For babies. So that's my story for today, Mama. Oh, wow. That's crazy. And he's still in jail? What's his name? Dr. Schwartz? Yeah. He'll get, I guess Dr. Schwartz is up for parole in 2029. But okay. I hope that they don't ever release him. I ever. know. Because mm -hmm. who knows what else he's going to do. He's just like a punk. Like, I was looking at pictures he of him. Is. He is. Yeah. So, like, he looks like a doofus. Like, he's like a total yeah. doof. I was like, wow, that, I would never expect that from yeah. him. But That's I guess the looks can be deceiving. I just like that part where I read that he had, like, permanent eye damage. And I know I shouldn't never, like, wish bad on anybody or whatever. But I was like. But that's crazy though you're an eye doctor and then now you have and you oh, killed an ophthalmologist because you were a jealous crazy little punk yeah. and now you lost like most of your eyesight i was like talk about karma karma's a bitch <laughs> that's crazy yeah i mean like it's one thing to like shoot somebody but like to stab someone like so mm -hmm. many times like what gives you that anger or that rage or you know what I mean it's like it's I, just crazy and I think he specifically wanted him stabbed too like I think he really wanted him to suffer and like I think oh, that's what he wanted God. and it was so sad too I was reading like they could tell what time Dr. Stidham left the office he had like um a conference that day or or a lecture I guess he <laughs> lectured he did lectures in the um the medical plaza where his uh, practice was so he mm -hmm. had done like a lecture or something that day and he had set the alarm to his office at like around 7 30 and the cleaning crew didn't find him until after 10 o'clock oh, so wow. he laid there in the parking lot that whole time until they found him sad so sad that's it was really sad crazy. i know mm -hmm. yep mm -hmm. that's my story mama that's crazy mm -hmm. uh, hopefully his kids or one of his kids will you know be a doctor too and like continue on his legacy or that would be something. cool I should look into that I didn't look into that but because they would be well yeah they're like in their early 20s now and yeah yeah they're we're around like, 20 yeah. and 23 20, 20, I hope yeah. they are Aww. I hope so yeah. So that's crazy. Oh, Don't wow. be a jealous douche. That's yeah. the moral of the story. <laughs> <That's> the moral. <laughs> yes. And if you <laughs> hear somebody rambling about someone that they hate, yeah. Geez, say something. Don't just be like, eh, just crazy. I wouldn't want to live on that. I wouldn't want to live with that on my conscience for the rest of my life like that. Yeah. Maybe I could have said something and stopped somebody mm -hmm. from being murdered, you know, a family mm -hmm. man. And saved someone. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. oh. Well, that was a good story, Mama. And very sad. So hopefully Dr. Short stays in jail longer. <laughs> yeah. Ever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm Well, hope you guys enjoyed this crazy sad story and if you guys did please don't forget to like this video and subscribe and also turn on the notification bell so you'll be notified as soon as we upload every sunday and wednesday and if you have any stories that you think we should cover please leave it below in the comments or you can email us at momsoncrime at gmail and all of our social media is below you can message us there I was kind of thinking coming up in a month or so, I want to do a like, ghost story. So if anybody has like real ghost stories, you could email those to us and we could do like a compilation of reading them. Mm -hmm. um, and that's all we have for today. So we'll see you guys next time. Bye guys. Bye.